10 minute murder. In October of 2003, a little boy died in Atlanta. His parents, Sonia and Joseph Smith Sr., called 911 from their family home, telling the operator that their son, eight-year-old Joseph Jr., was unresponsive. According to Joseph Sr., he'd gone to pick Joseph Jr. up and noticed that the child was extremely sweaty and warm, and he wasn't waking up. Believing that his son might have just gotten too hot, he carried him to the home's carport and laid him on the cool concrete floor, hoping that that coldness would revive him. When Joseph Jr. remained unconscious, Joseph Sr. called for the ambulance. Cobb County first responders arrived at the scene where they found Joseph Jr. lying flat on his back. He was not breathing and they couldn't find a pulse. He was rushed to the children's hospital where the staff desperately tried to save his life but they were unable to revive him. The following day, he was pronounced dead. But it was immediately clear to the medical staff that Joseph Jr. had not died because of overheating or any other natural cause. He had passed away as the result of severe, long-term physical abuse. Joseph Sr. and Sonia admitted that they'd sometimes physically punished Joseph Jr., including locking him in a closet alongside a picture of Jesus and forcing him to pray for long periods of time. But they denied that they'd ever severely physically abused him. The Smith's definition of severe abuse was questionable. Under the guise of discipline, they would hit Joseph with belts, glue sticks, and coat hangers. Sonia said that a usual punishment session the child being punished would receive 10 blows at a time. Sometimes his older brother would be ordered to hold Joseph Jr. down to prevent him from running away or shielding himself. They didn't just lock him in a closet for a few minutes. They would bind his hands together with rope and keep him in there for hours or even days at a time. During these periods of imprisonment, Joseph had no food, no water, and he was given a bucket to use if he needed to go to the toilet. On the day that the 911 call was made, Joseph had been disciplined multiple times by his father, who had beaten his stomach with a glue stick. Later, Joseph's urine came back a dark brown color, and he began complaining about having a sore stomach. When Joseph Sr. took a break from the discipline to have a shower, Sonia took over beating Joseph Jr. with the glue stick hard enough to draw blood, even through his clothes. Their oldest son then forced Joseph into a small wooden box while still beating him, and then Sonia wrapped an extension cord around that box so that Joseph could not escape. It was only after Joseph Sr. finished his shower and tried to let his son out of the box that he realized that he was not breathing. One of the police officers who arrived at the crime scene later reported that shortly after he arrived, Joseph Sr. told him, quote, I'm not going to lie to you. He's bruised. In December of 2003, Sonia and Joseph Sr. were arrested for Joseph Jr.'s death. And they might have been accused of horrific child abuse and murder, but they still had a loyal group of supporters, and none were more loyal than their church. For the past three years, the Smiths had been regular members of the Remnant Fellowship Church. It was a fairly new church founded by author and dietitian Gwen Shamblin in 1999. The Remnant Fellowship's original followers were all people who had signed up for Way Down Workshop, a popular Christian diet and weight loss program that Gwen started in 1986. Gwen's program was highly controversial, and her book, The Way Down Diet, she taught her readers to use Christianity as a weight loss method by attempting to transfer their love of food into the love of God. She also received a lot of criticism for attaching the label of Christian to a weight loss business, and the finances behind her business were put under investigation in 2001. But despite the controversy, the Way Down Workshop was incredibly popular. By late 1998, it had over 250,000 participants across the United States, Canada, and Europe. It meant that, 
By the time Gwen decided to found the Remnant Fellowship Church, she already had a large group of loyal followers. People who have since left the Remnant Fellowship Church claim that corporal punishment of kids was a regular discussed topic in church teachings about how to correctly discipline a child. The church's website contained a collection of testimonies from those who had been helped by their teachings. And one of the testimonies included details of how the church had encouraged them to punish their children. Quote, I was hesitant and sometimes refused to properly discipline my children because I didn't want to hurt them or have them hate me. The testimony read, going on to claim that the member was now comfortable disciplining their children to save their souls from hell rather than being concerned about their flesh. The leaders of the church did not deny that they approved corporal punishment, but insisted that they let parents decide how to discipline their own children and that the church believed that hitting a child should only be a last resort. Soon after Joseph Jr.'s death, the church purchased two web domains related to the case, thesmithsareguilty.com and thesmithsareinnocent.com. If anybody Googled the case and clicked onto thesmithsareguilty.com, they were instantly redirected to thesmithsareinnocent.com, a website which the Remnant Fellowship dedicated to proving that Joseph Sr. and Sonia had never abused their son. The website's intro currently reads, Joseph Smith Sr. and Sonia Smith have been accused by the police as abusers within four minutes of a 911 call placed frantically in October of 2003, as their son lay dying of a fast-acting infection and septic shock, as the child abuse seeds were planted throughout the investigation that followed young Joseph Smith's untimely death, the media frenzy began. After young Joseph's autopsy, the Cobb County Medical Examiners concluded that the child had died because of a combination of acute and chronic abuse, but they were unable to tell whether the cause of the death had been asphyxiation or blunt force trauma. But there was no evidence to support the church's argument that Joseph had actually died from a septic infection, which was caused by him scratching his eczema. According to the medical examiners, there was absolutely no chance that Joseph's death had been accidental or a natural death in any way. The state of the boy's body, which witnesses later called one of the worst child abuse cases they had ever seen, proved that the death was a homicide. The Remnant Fellowship Church was raided by the police in 2004, but they were unable to find any evidence that linked the church's teachings to Joseph's murder. During Joseph Sr. and Sonia's trial, their older son, Michael Smith, testified about the events that led to Joseph Jr.'s death. He said that the punishment began when Joseph Jr. had behaved disruptively while the rest of the family had been watching a broadcast from the Remnant Fellowship Church. According to Michael, his brother had been screaming, cursing, and carrying on, as well as bothering his younger brother, two-year-old James, causing his parents to begin to beat him with a glue stick. And by the way, I've mentioned these glue sticks a number of times. They're not the small ones that go into these small craft uh, glue guns. These are large glue sticks, like industrial-sized glue sticks that they were using as a weapon. Afterwards, Joseph Sr. and Sonia had ordered Michael to force Joseph Jr. into the wooden chest. When Joseph Jr. kept struggling to get free, Michael tied the chest shut to prevent him from escaping. For about the first 10 minutes that Joseph Jr. had been trapped inside the chest, Michael said that his brother was yelling and swearing, saying, quote, I'm going to kill all you MFers when I get out. James is the first one on my list. I'm going to slit his throat. After that, Joseph Jr. was silent. On February 16, 2007, all 12 jury members were in agreement. The Smiths were both guilty of felony murder, false imprisonment, reckless conduct, and multiple counts of cruelty to children and aggravated assault. In court, on the day that the jury eventually reached their verdict, the prosecutors dimmed the lights during their closing arguments and brought out a birthday cake. They lit the candles and began to sing happy birthday to a young boy who would never grow older. It was the 16th of February, 2007, the day that Joseph Smith Jr. would have turned 12. Both Sonia and Joseph received the maximum sentence of life in prison, 
plus 30 years. And despite the unanimous verdict from the jury, the support from the church did not falter. To this day, the Remnant Fellowship Church still stands by the Smiths' innocence, collecting online donations on their behalf and paying for their legal fees. And throughout their incarceration, Joseph Sr. and Sonia have remained loyal members. That is 10-Minute Murder for today. Brief and bingeable true crime. My name is Joe. I'm the host, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this podcast. If you're on to the next episode or you're doing a binge listen, don't let me stop you. Keep right on rolling. Uh, and if you're brand new here, welcome. I'm super happy that you're here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Probably, I'm not a psychic or anything, but I'm going to guess that you like listening to podcasts right here where you're listening right now. Hit the subscribe button right now and you'll more easily catch up on all the back episodes of 10 Minute Murder. And if you follow on social media, follow the podcast on social media, you'll see the pictures of what we talk about here on the podcast. I don't post gross and graphic stuff though. And if one of those places you're listening happens to be Apple, or Spotify, or Audible, there's a place where you can rate and review and I'd appreciate if you do that and your positive feedback, it helps this show grow. So thank you so much for doing that. And quickly, a listener email today. Good evening, Joe. I've seen some of the videos that you were talking about last week where the people don't know that they're in a restaurant meant to harass the customers. Uh, that's like Dick's last resort is what they're talking about. It's funny, and I laughed, but have you seen the video of the war happening right now between the otters and the orangutans at a zoo? It's hilarious. Here's the link. And then they put the link in there. And let me tell you, I've clicked this link. It's a link to a TikTok video. I laughed so hard I cried watching this. Uh, I didn't. I had no idea there was a secret war going on at the zoo between the, the orangutans and the otters. It's so funny. I'll try to remember to post the link, but in case I don't, someone reach out and let me know to post the link. I've got it right here. And by the way, that email is from Maria in Lansing. And Maria, thank you so much for your email. If you'd like to send me an email, you can do that. Joe at 10minutemurder.com. Joe at 10minutemurder.com. Okay, that's going to do it. That's the episode for today. Thank you so much for listening to 10 Minute Murder. <laughs>